This is section 5.6 of Euler circuits called uh, Fleury's algorithm. All right, uh, Fleury's algorithm basically gives us a couple really good pointers on how to complete an Euler circuit or path the most efficiently. Uh, first thing, let's look at the preliminaries here. Uh, make sure that the graph is connected and either one, so case one, has no odd vertices so that a circuit is possible, or case two, um, has exactly two odd vertices where just a path would be possible. If neither of those are seen, then uh, neither a circuit or path can be completed. And on the graph on the right, everything does seem to check out. Uh, every vertex has either degree has degree either two or four. So we should definitely with this one be able to do a complete circuit. Let's see, just double checking. Yeah, it's all either four or two. All right, so starting out, uh, we could just choose any vertex. Now, if we had a graph that had two odd vertices on it, we'd have to actually start at one of the odd vertices so the path could be completed. But uh, for this particular example, I think any of them are going to work. And in the example, it looks like we're starting at F. So here, I'm going to mark that down. So start at F. Let's see where we should go next. We really could go to either C or D. So the um, person goes over to part C. And uh, notice the tip here on the left. At each step, if you have a choice, don't choose a bridge of the yet-to-be-traveled part of the graph. So avoid bridges if you can. However, if you have only one choice, take it. And um, at some point, we are going to get to a step where you could possibly choose a bridge. And i um, show you why that wouldn't work here. So that's the first step. We made it over to C. All right, here's Here's the next step. Walked over to D. Okay. Now here's a case where if we were to choose D to F, uh, that that would eliminate, uh, that would get us to F by itself, but then we'd be stuck. We'd be stuck on you know, F island and wouldn't be able to get back to the rest of the graph. So I would not go that way. Let's see where the uh, the example takes us next. Uh, okay, he goes over to A, so he gets rid of that piece. And uh, again, we have a bridge at A, B right here, so we would not want to go from A to B because that would cut our graph in half. So the only good option here is to either go down to C or down all the way to E. Either one of those will work just fine. All right, so we went to C first, and at this point, it should be pretty easy to see where the solution lies. Um, if we go to E next, and we go from E to A, and then A to B, and then B to D, and D to F, that should finish out the complete uh, circuit for us. Let's see how this plays out. Okay, so down to E, and, and there's the rest of it. So we have the 6. Seven, eight, nine, finishing up at F. So yeah, that worked pretty well. Okay, so now we have a different example problem. Uh, it looks like we've got a river, and we have three islands uh, in the river that are connected with some uh, some edges here. So really, I c looking at the banks, north and south bank, we can just represent those with uh, ver vertices. Okay, so. If I just say this is North Bank and this is South Bank right here and there's only one bridge connecting South Bank to A and then A is connected to B okay so I'm just gonna draw edges over all these bridges here And that's what this looks like in the end. On the next slide, I'll create a separate picture of this so it's a little easier, a little easier to deal with. Um, and we'd have vertices at B, C, and A, as well as the north and south banks. So that's there's the wireframe for this picture. Okay, uh, I'm gonna attempt to redraw this here on the bottom. So again, I'm gonna just represent the north bank with uh, a dot. We have A, B, C, and then we have all the edges connecting them. So it looks like 
from B to the north bank. There's multiple edges going on there from C to the north bank and then C to the south bank. All right, we have A to B and then B to C. Okay, so if we could redraw that underneath if we want, so we'll try that really quick. So we have the north bank, we have A, B, and C, and we have the south bank. And what we have is multiple edges from the north bank to B. We have an edge going from the north bank to C, then to the south bank. B and C are connected. We have A and B, and then A and the south bank. And I think that's, yeah, that's the same thing. So let's answer the questions. How many vertices and edges are there total? So we have, it looks like there are one, two, three, four. We have five vertices and edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven total edges. What is the degree of vertex A? All right, looking at A, it has one, two edges coming out of it. So the answer to that question is, uh, or to write this here, two, and um, and an Euler circuit is an Euler circuit possible? First of all, so remember, for an Euler circuit to happen, we need every single vertex to be even. Um, and I can say right now, I don't think that's going to happen because we have two odd uh, vertices, both the north bank and vertex C are odd. They have three. Uh, so the answer to that is going to be no. But an Euler path, is that possible? Yes, well, we do have an odd vertice right here, and we have an odd vertice right here. And those are the two, the only two odd vertices in the entire picture. So um, as long as you have two exact odd vertices, then a path is possible. And you can solve that if you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you yes based on the theorem.